conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Some make the week. Uh, it's been a crazy week uh, for me and the rest of the world. Uh, those of you who don't know, uh, I took a mental health week. Lord knows if I could take another one right now, I would. Uh, just was a lot going on last year, it was crazy, and I wanted to take the first week of this year and really be into who I needed to be and to be true uh, to myself uh, in taking care of me. Um, and s while I did some work and shared some stuff, I had no uh, counseling sessions uh, with any of my clients. So uh, as an empath, each one of those encounters on a weekly basis, I carry whatever is there because I care. I'm not just there for the money. Yes, I need to be paid. Yes, it's how I eat and make a living and so much more. So, uh, but I'm there because I want to be a difference maker, but it comes at a price. So I had to pull out of that. And then uh, Monday night, we have the incident with uh, DeMar Hamlin and uh, the world shifts. Like I haven't seen it in a, in a while. We get these uh, periodically, but you know, the coming together and the putting aside of differences and views and and, 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 and and all of that to one common cause of lifting up another human. Um, and and it, it pointed out a lot of things, but uh, I'm not gonna get into the depth of that, but I wanna celebrate the humanity that I experienced uh, this week. Uh, and so before I get into this summation, I want to remind you that if you're watching this video, you're probably aware of the work we do in the community and the fact that we are pushing a fundraiser and we are, I'm not even going to get into how much behind on fundraising. Uh, that's not where I want to take my mind, but I do want you to be aware that we are in the midst of a fundraiser and that the work we do in the community is absolutely necessary, whether it's our research center, whether it's our think tank, whether it's our program for mental health, whether it's my uh, passion, uh, Black Man Lead, which is a rite of passage initiative for young black males and as well as wraparound services for young adult males. Um, it's, it's so extremely important because when we racially socialize young black males, which is what a rite of passage does, we reduce their chance and proclivity towards violence, chance and risk of becoming violent. We risk, we reduce their chance of uh, 
dropping out of school, which increases their chance of becoming incarcerated. We uh, increase their chance of being productive in society, reduce the uh, risk for violence against spouses and loved ones, um, and increase their chance of developing the right skills uh, to earn a living wage and so much more so the productivity of young black males is directly associated the pro productivity and pro-social behavior of young black males is directly connected to uh, being properly socialized uh, with young females we have an issue with uh, childhood sexual abuse incest in the home we have a, an issue with domestic and in intimate partner violence uh, so many of our women are, tra are traumatized again I deal with this on a daily basis we have to have means through which to service and support engage and to assist in all of these different areas and we've been doing that for years uh, I mean actually decades this isn't new to me. I've been in the game. I've been, uh, before social media made a bunch of people famous, Doc was out there trying to make it happen uh, in different ways over different areas of my life as I grew up, but always in the game, always uh, that person that was, I guess, proud to be black was how it started. And then it, it, it just became unapologetically black. And, and I realized at some point uh, that I could be unapologetically black without hating anyone else, but being willing to defend myself against everybody else, De in my, defend myself and my people against everybody else. So show some love and support. Here's where I saw some other things this week that, that did bother me. The constant vitriol anger hatred and just intense animosity between our men and our women and because I've spent so much time researching, studying understanding and attempting to solve and in many instances creating solutions to many of the enigmatic issues we are plagued with. I understand the mechanisms at play that are driving the division. You know, you got personal experience. Yeah, that's a part of it, but that's not it. Every image that's portrayed of, of both our black women and our black men are images that support the negative uh, impressions that we have about our sisters and brothers and so what it does is it creates more of a reinforced idea of what we've experienced negatively not allowing us to acknowledge or observe that there are those who uh, don't behave that way there for, for women there are good men out here good single men out here that aren't perfect but know how to treat a woman know how to love a woman uh, know how to carry themselves about that life will protect you will go hard in the paint to provide for you will even take your children and love them as his own we're out here but when you judge us through the lens of how you've experienced men and then you couple that with the way we are being portrayed because see they're not showing you us they're showing you the fool that shot his girlfriend when she broke up with him. They're showing you the dude that killed his kids. They're showing you the dude that robbed this. And they're showing you the shows where the guy's got six women on the side. They're showing you all these reality shows with stupid behavior. And so they're reinforcing the idea that that's who we are. And the truth of the matter is the vast majority aren't. But they're not going to put us out there because it does not support the narrative they're pushing. And then when your experiences have been with men who don't know how to behave, who don't know how to treat a woman, who don't know how to love a woman, who doesn't consider being good to the woman, then you are going to hyper focus on that behavior because it's what you're used to. It's what you expect. It's what your brain and your mind will focus on. This is simple psychology. Same thing, man. Some of us, if we're going to be honest, got mama issues. 
mama wasn't right. Whether it was she broke up with dad and it was man after man that came in or she didn't have time to spend with us uh, because she was doing her own thing. Uh, me, I was, I was born to a 15 year old mom. She couldn't possibly know what it meant to be a mother. Fortunately, I had my great grandparents to rear me. And that was a blessing in and of itself. But with that being said, it still left a gap of my maternal mother not being able to do what she needed to do. Fortunately, I never held it against her. And whatever issues we did have, we've resolved. But that's that's it. And so we go out and we look at things. And, and maybe somebody else hurt you. Maybe you've seen things. And maybe your idea of women is what you've seen. And you got to understand that there's so much, there's a big world that's so much bigger than the world that you've lived in. But they, it's been narrowed, number one, by your experiences. And number two, it's been narrowed by what's being presented. And what we as a people are going to have to do is start to step back from our own personal experiences and start to look into a broader lens so that we can observe things and we can see things and we can go, well, you know, that that's a pretty nice guy. Man, that woman right there, I love the way she carries herself. I love the way she speaks. I love the way she has. I love her. I love her confidence. I love her sense. There's nothing wrong with an independent woman who knows how to lean into a person. But we've made independent women and strong black women uh, an image that I, I, I don't want strong black women to be a reflection of how hard she's had to struggle and take care of herself by herself and her kids. That shouldn't be. We're supposed to be there as men. And even if it doesn't work out, we still got to hang in there because that's what it's meant to be. Strong black woman should be a woman who knows who she is, who leans into her natural self and in, is, is in many ways the spiritual force that, 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 that is the cohesiveness of the family. While the man is the protector and the leader and the foundation of the family, we need those things. And sitting up saying it's too late and all that isn't acceptable. You cannot take a fatalistic approach to what we should be doing and how we should be doing it and where we need to go. You know, I'll never give up. The reason that I've been able to be successful in the things that I've been successful in is because I don't quit. Not because the world laid down to me, not because the odds weren't against me, but because I decided I don't care what happens. I'm going to get what I want or I'm going to die trying. And that's the same thing I am here. I'm not going to sit up and say, man, we're just far gone. I'm going to get my little stuff and I'm going to go over to my corner and I'm just going to do me. No, that's not acceptable to me. God didn't place me here to do me. God placed me here to be the best version of me so that I can help other people be them. And that's what I'm going to do with my people. You start at home and then you work your way out. Uh, and, you, and, and, and I am a prime example. You don't have to be perfect. I'm a long way from perfect, but I'm a person that knows who I want to be. And I wake up every day striving to be that person. I wake up every day striving to be the best version of myself. I wake up every day knowing what it is I want and need to do. And I'm becoming. That's the thing that I want my people to do is become. And it's going to take some time, but I'm so sick of the hatred. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm not minimizing what you've been through. I'm acknowledging it. I'm saying you've been through it. I've got clients. I know you've been through it. I know that our women have been through unbelievable things, but I also know that our men are uh, have the biggest targets uh, ever on their backs. I know our men have been emasculated, purposely uh, stripped of the ability to provide. Intentionally deindustrialization, uh, uh, taking uh, courses out of high schools that would train men uh, to come out of high school and earn a living wage. Now you got to go get in debt to learn how to be a plumber, learn how to be an electrician, learn how to work with wood and be car in carpentry and all that, or auto mechanics. All that stuff used to be taught in school and we used to come out of school and be able to get jobs making more than some people with, with, with degrees and they took that out of the hood. They took all of the plants, almost well, almost all the plants out of Michigan, which was how black men in that area uh, were able to support their families and and so what happened is we became unemployed we became underemployed and underpaid and then they they commodified us they said this is what he is because you know if he can't do this we'll do it and then we're going to open the door for you to come into 
uh, corporate America. We're going to open a door for you to matriculate into universes. We're going to open a door for you to be your own provider. So then it became, well, I don't need you now because the things that I needed you for. And what we forgot is he was more than just the person who brought the food home. He was the protector. He was the source of strength. He was the one who made the tough decisions and then took the consequences if he made the wrong decision. He was so much more than the person who brought the money in. But they found a way to narrow it and that's all we see i watch now over and over again somebody sent me a video yesterday of somebody threatening to leave their dude who has since he's been with them they haven't had to work i think it was four years and because he wouldn't pay for a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar wedding which he felt the money would be better used investing it in something long term duh she's threatening to leave him she called him broke because he said he didn't have 250 to put into a wedding that's the mindset we're pushing. And you got dudes out here that's so messed up that the slightest feeling of rejection throws them into a rage and they become highly destructive. We're not developing them right. We've got some responsibility in this. We can't sit up and keep pointing the finger at white supremacy racism. They're doing what they do. How you win in life isn't when people try to get people not to do what they do. It's knowing what they do and then doing what you need to do. And that's what I want to encourage us to do. We need to get more involved. Uh, I am so grateful that I'm in a position to provide solutions, provide answers. They're in my books. They're in my lectures. They're in my videos. Uh, they're in my programs. Uh, and I'm going to continue to do what I do. But that's the summation. Uh, you guys keep lifting me up um, as I continue to grow in and, and become who I, who, who I desire to be. Uh, I am so grateful that I'm who I am because there were so many things in my past that tried to push me in another direction, that tried to take the life out of me, that tried to destroy me. I mean, early in life, I, I almost died at nine months. So I'm here for a reason. And I believe in that reason wholeheartedly. And I'm going to stand in it. Me and, and my imperfections are going to stand in it. Me and my wondrous uh, explorations are going to stand in it. I'm going to believe in me. I'm going to love me. I'm going to be excited about the opportunities that I have in front of me. I'm going to steward my chances. I'm going to steward my opportunities. I'm going to manage them well. And I'm challenging you to do the same thing. And on that note, I'm challenging you to support the work we do so that we can reach more people, so that we can have the resources we need to change lives and to push our people into a better tomorrow. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Daddy.